We're with Mark Shuttleworth in Guangzhou, in China. And Mark, what do you do these days? Uh, I'm at UCL. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer. Hold on. UCL, UCL means? University College London. Okay, good. And what do you do there? And uh, I, I'm in the uh, Centre for Translation Studies, CENTRAS. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a senior lecturer in... Well, I, I'm a lecturer in Translation Studies. Okay. But you've had more responsibilities there um, over the years. Over, over the years, I, I've been head, head of different things. At the moment, I'm not head of anything, and I'm quite enjoying it. Was, uh, was you a, were at um, Imperial. Yeah, yeah, and before that, I was at Leeds. Yeah. That was my first academic post. And, and um, along with Andy Rothwell, I, I was joint uh, program director oh, okay. of uh, MARTS, as it was called, the MA in Applied Translation Studies. At at, at, at Leeds, at Leeds. That's right. Then yeah. you went to Imperial, went to Imperial in, in 2000, London. And um, I, I, my brief was to put flesh on the bones of a program that had been given approval, and, and that became the um, MSc in Scientific. So you really set it up, the program um, at Imperial. I, I didn't create it, I set it up. Okay. I implemented yeah. it, yes. Yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. And then they got rid of you, or something well, they, like that. They got so. rid of. Uh, they decided, for reasons best known to themselves, they decided that they didn't want translation studies, and they are a scientific, technical, medical translation uh, 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 institution. Yeah. <laughs> institution is the word I meant. Yeah, yeah. Um, they do do business studies, yeah. and even though we were, to all intents and purposes, flourishing, uh, yeah, and yeah, bring, bringing in good yeah, money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they just decided that we weren't in line with their sort of business plan. Yeah. Um, I think maybe that they were just starting the, the, the what they called the translation hub yeah. in a different part of the college, yeah. which was all about translational research, translating. Ah, in the sense of transfer medical, of knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Okay, so yeah. it's a confusing yeah. thing. So oh. they thought maybe there was a possible source of confusion, and they helped us to move to UCL. You, you actually you landed on your feet. We landed so on our feet. Quite, yes, quite well, uh, then. Yeah. Everybody. Basically, as at UCL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I remember writing letters of complaint at yes, the time, but, but in retrospect, in retrospect, it was fine. Yeah. Now, you're best known to people as the author or co author of the dictionary of translation studies. Indeed. Is that. Yeah? Can you tell us a bit about that? A little bit long in the tooth now. I think it was first published in 1997. It's still a reference. Yeah, it's still, okay. it was still used. Yeah, yeah, the references yeah. are a bit old and, and the yeah. terminology has moved on. Yeah. yeah. So, um, better late than never, I'm working on the second edition now. Okay. So, do you know when that might come out? Is it... um, if not next year, then 2018. Um, 2017, if at all possible. We'll see how So, it the goes. first but edition was 1997. Seven. Yeah. So as you do that, do you pick up key changes, sea changes in, in the discipline over those years? Um, I think so, yes. Uh, um, there's uh, all kinds of things uh, happening now um, that perhaps weren't so well documented. Maybe they were yeah. just starting at the time um, when, when the dictionary first came out. Okay. So that um, would be what? The technology? Or? Well, certainly the technology. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be adding lots of new terms yeah. which are becoming much more current, even though they existed in, in the world, in the outside world, as it were. Yeah. But they perhaps weren't talked about so much yeah. in the translation studies mainstream. Okay. Are there are other areas you notice that have <coughs> developed um, new terms over the years? Yes, I mean, there were a number of areas that, that uh, didn't have full representation in the first edition, so uh, I'm putting that right. Um, feminist approaches to translation, sure. for example, yeah. that's yeah. A, a gap that's going to be yeah. um, plugged. Um, and uh, post colonial. Yeah. Uh, yeah. approaches as well but um, because it's a dictionary rather than say a handbook it has to be not not um, topic based but term based so yeah. in other words the way into a lot of these topics is to talk um, largely through more precise more specific terms okay good let's go back when you were 23 24 25 when you were I don't know Senior student doing <laughs> doctoral type stuff perhaps. Where, where were you then? All right, well, I wasn't doing doctoral type stuff. Uh -huh. I, I finished my undergraduate degree 86, that was at Oxford, yeah. um, a BA in uh, Russian and German. Okay. When I stayed on in Oxford for one more year, um, I, rightly or wrongly, I decided I didn't want to pursue an academic uh, career at that stage, but I wanted a postgraduate qualification, and that I did in the form of a um, 
diploma in Slavonic studies. I was a one-year mm -hmm. diploma at Oxford. And after okay. that, I went off to do something different for a few years. I went to teach. I spent four years teaching at rugby school All right. in the Midlands. Oh, okay. Right. Which incidentally was the school that uh, Peter Newmark attended. Oh, well, the, the great... It's quite, quite funny when we discovered we had that in funny. Okay. We had that in common. Right. But, uh, um, and after four years of that, I decided I didn't want to do that uh, yeah. for, a, for a career. And I looked for a way to get back to university. Okay. So I did a one-year MA. That was the MA in Special Applications of Linguistics okay. um, in Birmingham. All right. So up to there, there's nothing in translation at all. You're, you're, uh, well, you're a linguist teacher. Yes, there was pretty much. But yeah. um, I did do a, a module in translation studies there. And Mona Baker was at, um, at Birmingham mm -hmm. at the time. And she taught um, a module, which I did, yeah. uh, out of curiosity. And I found that quite inspiring. Okay, good. Um, I moved to Leeds. I was, I was applying for a PhD, but then probably one of the last people in the country, I got a, an academic post without a PhD. You don't really need a PhD in, in the UK, do you? I think it's pretty much obligatory now. Really? I know have, some I top it, people who don't have them. Yeah, but they, they've been they never wrote quite a, a thesis. Time, think, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So eventually I got yeah. my PhD, okay. uh, having worked in part time for quite a number of years. And where was that? At Leeds? Or that where did was, you... It was started in Leeds but finished in London. I have a okay. PhD in the University of London. Okay, in, in what then? In translation studies? In, in translation studies, in metaphor in translation, All right. scientific metaphor. Oh, which has the been a long standing topic. A long standing topic. And, and book coming book, out at last, is that right? Out. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's, it's been a long time coming. This <laughs> Quite a long gestation. Okay. Yes, definitely. When you moved into translation studies, I mean, you, you moved to Leeds, you've done that one course. What did you think of translation studies? Was it was it what you know something with a, a bright future, or was it just an interesting thing to do? Yes, yeah, so I think I, I probably realised fairly early on, and, and the department where I was in Leeds had, had a, a head, Michael Holman, um, who also realised that very on, very early on. Yeah. Um, and he, he got me, he encouraged me to get involved with the dictionary project. Okay. And. Um, he also very much encouraged me and Andy Rothwell to uh, to set up the uh, master's program that I told you. So you had a very good team at Leeds. I think, did actually, yeah. Because Andy team. then went to Cardiff, from right? Swansea, Swansea, yeah, Swansea, Swansea, sorry, yeah. over there. Right. And uh, quite a number of people had yeah. Bob Clark. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember working with him right, before, yes. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, Jed Rubin, who's now right. at uh, So you've, PA, you've dispersed. You've dispersed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that seems to be quite instrumental in setting up translation studies in the United Kingdom. I mean, you had well, there were a number already in place, but they were the more, uh, I was going to say tradition, I didn't mean that, the ones well, that had been around for a number of years yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps we, we were one of the first of a new clutch. What about the, with the technologies? Yes, that was, I know that was something that you were doing there. thanks to Bob Clark. Yeah. Okay. Who was just at the right place, at the right time, and uh, incredibly supportive of what we were doing. Right. Um, and he, he basically helped get the course up and running. We couldn't have done it without him. And you picked it up. I mean, that's what you yeah. teach now? It's, it's what I can teach. I've taught that for on and off, mostly on rather than off, for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. With, with the, the, the evolution of the technologies. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen, yeah. I've seen yeah. Yeah. one or two changes over the years. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Look, is there, is there anything we really need research in now, looking forward? Well, I mean, it's such a it's such a broad area of translation studies, and it's probably much broader than it was in the mid '90s when I was first becoming involved. Yeah. And it's sort of spread, it has spread its wings. It's it's moving out into all kinds of different areas in terms of you know text types, not just looking at literary translation and uh, the more sort of traditional. Translation types, scientific translation, that, that's yeah. sort of coming to the fore to some extent. Yeah. I think yeah. maybe more could be written on medical translation. There are scholars involved okay. in that. Yeah. Um, on the technological side. Of yeah, course, I was thinking of just how, how the technologies influence yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. We're really I think guessing, I think. Linguistics will continue to be there. I'd be quite interested yeah. to see more of a marrying up between. Um, Translation mm. studies, the more technical end of translation yeah. studies, and computational linguistics. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I think it would be very um, positive to see more of a crossover between those two. Do you mean with respect to machine translation input? Or yes, or, I mean yeah. there is a, 
a little bit of a problem, a translation studies person wanting to get seriously involved in, in uh, um, machine translation does need to develop uh, programming skills. Yeah. And, and yeah, that yeah. does potentially create quite a gulf, but I think at the very least there's more... There's more uh, but you, you have your students setting up uh, statistical machine translation systems. So yeah, but they're not learning yeah. programming. They're, not, but they they're can, not learning programming. But they could know uh, what's going on there. using a, a commercial um, product, uh, mm. which we're, you know, that, that's... Uh, very generously provided by, by the, um, the software company, that's yeah. um, Canton MT in, yes. in, in, in Dublin. Um, but if you were to do that from scratch using the, the Moses toolkit, uh, you would need to have quite a lot of uh, you know, serious technical background. Okay, which, which it, we uh, tend not to have. We tend not to have. I haven't tried doing it myself, okay. but it's, it's, I'm meant, I believe it's quite tricky. Yeah. You need to know yeah. Linux and you need to be able to build the um, applications from components, okay. as I understand it. All right, but I'm impressed that you get your students working on translation memories, machine translations, and then building an MT is, it's, it's I really, think it's really one good. Of, I think they find it very rewarding, and ju judging from their um, assessed work. They, they really did go to Hammer and Tom's, and yeah. they produced some pretty good uh, systems. They had a bit of a... Um, Crazy ride with the, the blue score, which went down as well as up. Okay, yeah, uh, it's it mysterious. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was an excellent learning experience for them, and the, the amount of uh, the number of resources that they collected, um, and the amount of material, the training data that they uploaded, was very impressive. Okay, Mark, thank you very much. You've got a